So is there anybody out there who has a habit of misplacing objects? No way. Do you, Samuel? Is that true? Me too, sometimes. But she does it all the time. She'll say, where are my keys? Where are my sunglasses? Where's that envelope? I need to leave the house now, and I need to leave it with that envelope. And one day she got so exasperated, she said, oh, where is my head? And I thought, that is a great name for a Halloween story. And so I present to you the story of where is my head. Now, I know you're not supposed to go trick-or-treating alone, and I wasn't, really. It was the Halloween when I was 10 years old, and I was on my way to my best friend Henry's house to get Henry so that we could go trick-or-treating together. Well, as I was leaving the house, my father looked up from the newspaper that he was reading, looked up over his half-rim reading glasses, set up in his easy chair, and he said, Hey, sport, where are you going? And I said, Oh, over Henry's house. And he said, where, what are you going to do there? I said, I'm going trick-or-treating. And he said, well, you're not supposed to go trick-or-treating alone. And I said, well, I'm not really. I'm going to Henry's house to get Henry. Well, you know, like I was just telling all of you guys. So my father said, well, then, would you like a ride as far as Henry's house? And I said, ah, oh, come on, Dad. I've walked alone to Henry's house before. And that is what I set out to do. Well, I was in the center of town. You know the part where all the stores are? You know that part where all the stores are? And it was kind of creepy. Because normally at that time of day, there's all kinds of people coming and going. People driving up and down the street, walking all up and down the sidewalk, in and out of stores. But I was all alone. I could hear my footsteps echoing off the sidewalk. Clip, clop, clip, clop. Dead leaves startled me. They rattled in the tree overhead. And way back behind me down the sidewalk, I could hear the wind begin to moan. Like this, it went way. Where, where is my head? <gasps> I thought I heard a voice. Well, two things occurred to me right away. One, I should have listened to my father and taken a ride to Henry's house. And two, I should have listened to my mother and cleaned my ears better when I took a bath. Because I could have sworn that I heard that voice, which I heard again now, this time a little bit louder, this time a little bit closer, this time unmistakable. And this time, anybody that wants to can say it with me. Without all the moaning, it went like this. It went, where is my head? Well, I started to walk a little bit faster, and I thought, oh, great, it's a ghost. It's a ghost from somebody who died in the last century, somebody who was decapitated. Well, we learned that word in school that, that week. It means <laughs> met with a very unfortunate accident. Well, somebody who was decapitated, and then, and then, and then, and then their head was cut off. And the body was buried in one place, and the head was buried in another. And every year, on Halloween evening, the headless body roams the countryside, looking for its missing part, calling out in that mournful voice, which I heard behind me yet again, this time still louder and closer, with me, if you please. It went, where is my head? Well, I started to say, wait a minute, calm down. It's probably just somebody messing with you, you know, somebody on their way to a Halloween party in costume. You know, maybe somebody with one of those costumes where they put fake shoulders right here. You guys can use this idea this, this year, by the way, if you want to. They put fake holder, shoulders right here, pull a shirt up over the whole thing, and walk around peeking out through a buttonhole looking like a very tall, headless person. But I didn't have much time to be comforted by this thought because I heard the voice again. This time it was loud. This time it was right behind me. It went with me. It went, where is my head? And I turned around, and there, <gasps> coming towards me, was this woman, this older woman, who was wearing these dark black, maybe dark gray clothes that looked like they belonged in the last century. Her hands were skeletal and white. Her face was thin and pale, her long hair was gray and stringy, and, wait a minute, face, hair, well, she was all there. I mean, I don't know if she was all there, but there was nothing missing, if you know what I mean. But I didn't have much time to be comforted by that thought either, because now the woman was walking right towards me, and then she walked right <laughs> past me. <sighs> and when she did, she called out once again in that mournful voice, she called out, 
Where is my head? And I don't know what came over me, but I got very bold all of a sudden. I pointed up at her and I said, excuse me, ma'am, lady, it's right there on top of your neck. Well, the woman stopped dead in her tracks, if you'll excuse the Halloween pun. And then, very slowly, she turned around and faced me. And I thought, And then, very slowly, she began to raise her hands up in the air like this, higher and higher, up in the air. And I thought, oh great, she's a witch. She's a witch and she's going to turn me into a frog. She's going to turn me into a frog and I'll have to hop all the way home tonight. I'll hop all the way home and if I can even make it up the front steps, I won't be able to reach the doorbell. I'll have to slap at the bottom of the front door with a small wet foot. My parents, if they even hear me, they'll open the door, look down, see that it's just a frog, and push me off into the bushes with their foot. I'll have to sleep alone tonight out in the cold. Tomorrow morning when the school bus comes, I won't even be able to get up on the bottom step. Well, higher and higher up in the air, she raised her hands higher and higher, and then, when they could go no higher, she began to bring them down, down and down like this, until finally, they came to rest, just like this, on top of her head. And then, very slowly, a smile began to spread across her face. Oh, she said, yes, there it is. Oh, thank you, you're such a helpful young man. And then, with her hand still on top of her head, she turned and walked off down the sidewalk. And I was left there to wonder, was she a witch? Was she a ghost from the last century? Was she someone in a costume on her way to a Halloween party? Or maybe was she just some peculiar lady? I don't know. I never did find out. But what I do know is that as I watched her walk away down the sidewalk, with her hands on top of her head, just like this. I heard her call out in that mournful voice into the cold, cold night. Where are my hands? Where is my head? Thank you very much. Hey, thanks so much. My name is Bruce Marcus. I'm a storyteller from the Boston area. With me are a few other storytellers from the Boston area. Collectively, we are Mass Mouth. It is our pleasure to be here with you today on this beautiful fall day. We arranged the weather ourselves, so give us a big thank you. Uh, we're, we're here doing it pretty much just for the cider donuts and spreading the word about storytelling. So if you want to connect, there's all kinds of great storytelling events that you can view, that you can participate in, in the area. You can visit us at massmouth.org. We have a few flyers and cards down here on the table.